How can we ensure that Democrats get things done if they have that level of power in the future? So when we flip the House and flip the Senate, I think the first thing we should do is deal with the children who are being separated from their families at the border. We should, uh, I, I think we should get rid of ICE. Looking at immigration as a humanitarian issue. Immigration is our strength. It is, our diversity is what makes this country and our economy so strong. I think we should pass the gun reform issues within the first month, all of them. I love that. Now, with such a controversial title, I should begin this video with some clarifications. When I say women weaken nations, I'm not saying that women are not essential for a nation's survival or well-being. Of course they are. Women bear the children for the nation's future and survival, and they bring essential balance and nurturing to the life of a people. And neither am I saying that women cannot have brilliant and satisfying careers in whatever field they have a talent for. And it is also true that there are some talented female nationalists who are making an important contribution to our cause. But my point is that, regardless of outliers, which always exist, there are key differences between men and women. And any healthy nation must maintain this tricky balance between masculine and feminine to stay strong and healthy. The modern West has lost sight of this, and just look at the results. Here is a clip that perfectly illustrates my concerns about the current role women are playing in the West, and how men are enabling them. But I don't want a man's life to be taken away just because you want, don't want to miss your flight. I'm Can you myself. please turn it off first of all? Because now you are an hourly passenger. You are not doing what you have to do on board. Okay? I'm doing what I can to save a person's life. As long as a person is standing up, and if more people are standing up, then the pilots can't take off. So all I want to do is to stop the deportation, and then I will comply with the rules here. This is all perfectly legal, and I have not committed a crime. I'm trying to stop it. It's your country's rules. Yeah, I'm trying to change my country's rules. I don't like them. It's not right to send people to hell. But you're preventing all these passengers to go in their destination. Yes. But they're not going to die. He's going to die. How do you know that? Because it's Afghanistan. The Turkish guy helping me out and telling me that, that what I'm doing is right. right? We are with you. No He's with me. Also with, with him. Guy. And some people are really applauding no, 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 all this that I'm doing. They're taking his bags out, so I'm just waiting for the flight attendant to make me shit say that it's okay for me to go out the back of the plane to go out. So this young woman, in her self-righteousness, in her complete ignorance of who this deportee was, the details of his failed application, or what he may have done, chooses to ground the plane, disrupting the entire airport and hundreds of passengers, just so she can be a human rights crusader for a day and get her 15 minutes of fame. Doubtless she would have done the same thing if these men were being deported. But don't worry, Elin. These child rapists from Africa are being allowed to stay in Sweden. So why could no one take control of the situation and simply remove her from the plane? Why did the world have to stop turning because some SJW woman got upset? Because the dominant role of women in public life has normalised and encouraged this kind of emotionality over rational analysis, informed debate and the rule of law. Men are guilty of enabling this. What we are witnessing here is the utter chaos brought about by the disconnection of European peoples from their nations and physical and cultural survival. To be a leftist today is to automatically assume that someone with a brown skin is innocent and that someone white in a position of authority is abusing it. The West is dying through a lack of balance in the natural order. When women play such a key role in determining the agenda for our civilization, and when men are so weakened that they do not balance that, we are a ship heading for the rocks. Because there is precious little respect, balance or understanding between the sexes today, they have become locked in a battle for dominance rather than existing in equilibrium. Spurred on by disruptive globalist and leftist interests, femininity is winning this battle, but the fight back has begun. 
In broad terms, men and women certainly think differently on average. As far as the reasons why they do is concerned, the research splits into three basic areas, biological, cognitive and socio-cultural. And there is certainly scientific evidence of sexual differences in each of these areas, but regardless of the reason for the difference, what really matters is that there is a difference. Naturally, globalists don't like nationalism, and this is why you are seeing the steady corruption of femininity and the destruction of gender norms, creating the most bizarre of worlds where phrases like not all women have vaginas are common. In this documentary, the BBC found one of the last entirely white schools in England to try to indoctrinate some children into believing that there are no differences between boys and girls. It's being marketed under the hashtag no more boys and girls. Just imagine if they had tried to get away with this in a Muslim school. Leftists might be crazy, but they're not suicidal. What we see in this program is the left, as it always does, try to manipulate the children to conform to its vision of how the world should be, not how it is. Just like it did in the Soviet Union, Mao's China and the many other societies it brought to bloody destruction. By showing the children exceptional cases of female mechanics and male makeup artists, they are trying to fool the children into believing that these things are the norm, and that, if they have natural, traditional inclinations, to think they are baseless. They say in the program that men's and women's brains have exactly the same structure, but this is simply not true, and they don't address the size difference, and they won't acknowledge the role of the different sex hormones. The program is well worth a watch, if only to see how frustrated the presenter, Dr. Javid Abdel Monaim, becomes when the girls and boys just aren't the same. Of course, the one hypothesis that never occurs to Dr. Abdel Monaim is that boys and girls are just different. This is child exploitation and abuse. This is typical BBC. It's typical leftism masquerading, very badly, as science. Men's and women's roles are completely equal in importance and should be valued and respected as such. In our demented modern world, equality has come to mean that women should want to be engineers or soldiers and that men should want to stay at home and look after the kids or become nurses. But even when they choose to have careers, women make very different choices to men which befit their natural inclinations and talents. The fact is that, no matter how much social engineering the left tries, it can't make engineers out of women in any significant number. When women do try to enter STEM fields, for example, they often find that they are simply unsuited to these ways of thinking. They get depressed and frustrated. Maybe their abilities in these areas can be improved with practice, but that is not the same as natural inclinations or preferences. Nursing has always been dominated by women and engineering by men. It's a sad, long and painful lesson our civilization is being taught right now that the sexes are simply different. Even more important are the different voting patterns between the sexes. We know that in every western country from the US to Sweden, voting patterns between the sexes are remarkably consistent. If only men voted, we would likely never have a social democratic government ever again. And if only women voted, goodbye nationalism forever. It is no coincidence that nationalism is dominated by men and that women play a much bigger role in open borders movements like the Green Party. These voting patterns reflect the natural roles the sexes play. Men are more cautious and given to the protection of the tribe and the borders of the country, while women favour the more nurturing, trusting and open approach to people. The left wants us to equate equality with sameness, but this is deranged. Of course, men and women should have the opportunity to do what they want with their lives, so I'm not talking about compulsion of any kind. I'm talking about ending the creepy, politically correct obsession that there can be no differences between the sexes. I'm talking about reviving the role of the housewife and mother as the most valuable and prestigious thing most women can do with their lives. Because it's true. I'm talking about allowing the sexes to be themselves, to abandon the idea that men should be more feminine and that masculinity is toxic. This is, quite literally, a matter of our nation's life or death. 
When women buy into the lie that they do not need to rush into having children, what they are really buying into is the idea that it's something akin to doing that night class in Japanese or flower arranging. Nothing particularly important and something that they can always do next year. There's always some more fun you can have before then, right? And this is perhaps the single biggest cause of Europeans' demographic decline. We have bought into the notion that all that matters is our own gratification, and that commitment is a dirty word. Does any of this mean that women should not be in positions of authority and involved in politics? I don't think so. But I think it necessary for any stable Western state to have laws in place to maintain the inviolability of the nation's borders and the host population's super-majority. When a woman has huge power over a country and a continent, you get Merkel, and it remains my hope that she will stand trial for the chaos she has wrought in Germany and throughout Europe. Women and men in any position of authority, particularly when shaping young minds, should be strictly limited in what they can pass on. Here again we see child abuse to prove a political point that open borders are a good thing. This simply has to be stopped. The thing is, nature abhors a vacuum. Just like our own bodies, if our society gets out of balance, it gets sick. And what you are seeing now is the process of nature filling that vacuum. If so many of our women are no longer capable of fulfilling their primary role in society as mothers and carers, and if our feminized men are no longer capable of asserting themselves and bringing balance, then nature will find other tribes who will. We can see the process has begun. Here is a video showing what these empowered women's future holds if they keep supporting the importation of people who take a rather more primitive view on their standing in society. Be careful what you wish for, ladies. Nature will fill the vacuum one way or another. Until next time, be well.